by mistake maybe you're in a hurry for something to get cold you put it in the freezer and you forget about it and it goes something like this now, I can remember true, true story and I might have told this before but back when I was a kid back when I was seven or eight years old my mother would would thoroughly and faithfully every Saturday clean the kitchen uh, floors, cupboards, just everything. She would thoroughly clean the kitchen. I can remember one Saturday going in and on the counter was a frozen can of pop. And I remember it was Diet Cola uh, because my dad was a diabetic and he left it in the freezer overnight and there it was on the counter and mom clearly said to me, 
do not open that can of pop. Okay, you know where this is. You know where this is going. Well, no more than five minutes later, uh, I come back in the kitchen and and nobody's there. And so, what do I do? I I open the pop, and it was. It was nothing less than a pressure wash coming out to the, most of it went to the ceiling, but to the, the cupboards, the, the, the walls, the floor, it was a huge mess and Darren was in huge trouble. Well, in our story today, uh, God is going to make very clear to Old Testament Israel what he wants them to do and doesn't want them to do. And he's going to say that very, very clearly. And they are going to agree to it 100%. But in no less than, than days after that, they are going to majorly disobey from what they agreed to. And so how does God respond to that? And what influence does the prayer of Moses have on what God does? We're going to go to our story now. Let's go there now. So let's turn to Exodus chapter 32. Exodus 32, we're going to start at verse 1. Just follow along. Words will be, uh, words will be on the screen. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come Make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Aaron answered them, Take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. Then they said, These are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, Tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings. Afterwards, they sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down because your people, whom you brought out of Egypt, have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made, them, made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, These are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses. They are a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation." But Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger Relent and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars of the sky. I will give your descendants all this land I promised them, and it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Lord, we, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this word. And you tell us that these things are written. They're recorded for our instruction. So help us to be attentive. 
to your instruction today. Uh, that your, the seed of your word would land on fertile ground uh, in our lives, uh, not where it would be snatched away. And we pray this for our good and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to look at this story in three parts today. Three parts, uh, but before we do that, before we break it down in three parts, let's set the stage here a little bit. Let's take a, let's take a one-minute history lesson just to set the context of, of what we're looking at today, to get the context right. This is a, a well-known uh, Old Testament story here. That, that the nation of Israel, they've been set free, uh, free from over 400 years of Egyptian slavery. They've been set free under the leadership of Moses and his spokesperson, Aaron. Remember the, 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 the sea, the waters have parted and they've escaped on dry land en route, en route to the land of promise. And so, so in, in, in Exodus 19, we'll, we'll pick it up there, where we find recorded that they've been, they've been freed for about three months. It's been three months since they've come, they've come through the, the, the parted waters, and, and they're at the base of a mountain called Sinai. It is an important mountain here. And, and Moses goes up the mountain himself. And, and on that mountain, remember uh, we've said before that good things happen on mountains, generally in, in the Bible. Good things happen on mountains. And so God gives Moses a covenant, a covenant for, for, for the people that, that if you obey me, then you will be my special people. And Moses goes down the mountain, he meets with the elders, and he shares with them what God has told him. And the elders respond. It's, it's in Exodus 19, verse 8. They say, we will do everything the Lord has said. And so now Moses goes up the mountain now a second time. And God gives to him verbally the Ten Commandments and what was known as the law. These, these laws for the people to follow. And, and, and this time, Moses comes down off the mountain, and he doesn't go to the elders. He goes to, he goes to all the people, and he tells them what God has said to him, and the people respond. And, and that's in chapter 24, I think it's verse 7. The people respond, we will do everything the Lord commanded. A third time, Moses goes back up the mountain. And this time where God promises, he promises these, these Ten Commandments to, to put them on tablets, to put it, you could say, in writing, and, and to write these laws on. And, and, and the issue this time, third time up, the issue this time is that, is that Moses is gone a longer time. It's taking him longer. And so the people are going, uh, where, where is he? He, he? This guy Moses, he's, he's been gone a long time. That, that sets the stage for today. That, that's, that's the history lesson, the context for today. So that takes us now to what we'll call, what we'll call part one, uh, breaking this down. Part one we'll call impatience. Uh, look again at verses 1 and 2, Exodus 32. Uh, records, when the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, come make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. And so Aaron answered, take off your gold earrings that your wives, your sons, your daughters are wearing. Bring them to me. Get this. That it's just, it's just eight chapters ago, uh, less than 40 days ago, that they received the Ten Commandments. That, that they're saying, we will do everything the Lord has spoken. And, and it's no more than, than weeks later, they break the first two commandments. That, that they, the, the commands, you shall have no other gods 
and that you shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything under heaven or earth. And, and it's just, I mean, man, it's, it's days later. It, it's just days after that. And so the question is, what happened? Impatience. They were impatient. Moses has been gone a long time. And they grow impatient. What do they do in their impatience? What do they do? As one commentator says, they go back to what they know. They go back to what they know. In their mind, what, where is that? The, what, what would they go back to? They go back to Egypt. And what did they do in Egypt? What was the culture in Egypt? Well, in Egypt, they worshipped idols. It, 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 that's, that's, that was the culture in Egypt. And, and one of the leading idols in Egypt was what? Take a guess what the leading object might have been in Egypt. It was a, it was a cow. It was a calf. There, there's an Egyptian god called Hathor. Hathor. I think there might be a picture of it here now. Uh, a picture called Hathor. Uh, goddess of the, the sky, fertility, and love. Part cow, part woman. And that was one of the leading gods in Egypt at that time. You know, when we think of patience, uh, we, think of, we think of not losing it. <laughs> not, not losing it. We, we think of keeping your temper. We're, we're, we're tempered people, so don't lose your temper. That, that's how we tend to think of patience. But patience in the Bible was that. It, it was that, but it was more than that. Patience in the Bible has more to do with waiting and trusting. With, with waiting and trusting. Uh, Well-known verse in Isaiah, uh, 40, 31, we'll put it up here. It, it reads, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run, not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Those who wait on the Lord... Waiting and trusting. That's, that's patience. That, that's patience that we see here in the Bible. How does impatience uh, show up? It, how can it show up? It can show up in our lives when we, when, when we move ahead on a decision, even though other people say don't do it. It, it, it can show up when, when we say, you know what? I don't know how I'm going to afford it. I'm just going to get it. Or, 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 I know I should take the time to get to know this person, but I can't wait for that. I'm just going to go for it. Uh, those are examples of impatience. Or, 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 or maybe you're growing in a particular area. You, you want to change from a, from a bad habit to a good habit. That's awesome. You, you want to go from something that, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do this instead. And, and, and that you're going along, you're, you're, you're making efforts and strides that way, and then, and then, there's, a, then there's an unmet expectation. Uh, then, there's a, then there's just a bad week when things are happening, and it just becomes more effort to keep making that change. And so impatience says, what do you do? You fall back in that old habit. You, you, you stop moving forward. You just say, I can't do this. You, what are you doing? You're in a sense going, you're going back to Egypt. You're going back to what you knew. You know, maybe, maybe this is your word for today. Uh, maybe this part right here is for you. It's just this, don't lose patience. Don't lose patience. Maybe you started the new year. You started off in January and you were making some changes. Now we're in February and, and you just lost patience. It's not too late. Don't lose patience. The changes that you've been trying to make, 
don't fall back, don't go to Egypt. In, in fact, uh, uh, Galatians 5.22, for what? The fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is what? It's love, joy, peace, patience. Patience. In their impatience, they tell Aaron, make us a golden calf. Which takes us to part two, part two of this story, part two that we'll call idols. Idols. Look, look back a few verses here. Uh, start at verse two, two to six again here. Aaron answered them, Take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings, brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. They said to, then they said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, tomorrow there'll be a festival to the Lord. So the next day, the people rose early, sacrificed burnt offerings, presented fellowship offerings. Afterwards, they sat down to eat, got up to indulge in, in revelry. You know what? Whether or, not, whether or not this idol was the god Hathor or not, we don't know. We, we don't know if it was that for sure. What, what we do know is that they were asking for a representation, a physical representation of the divine, and Aaron provides it for them. He does that. He, he tells them to take off their gold jewelry. He takes it, he melts it down, and forms this golden calf. You know, it's kind of kind of easy to trash Aaron here, isn't it? And, and I wouldn't disagree. <laughs> but he seems to at least... He seems to at least attempt to take that idol and, and somehow steer it back to God. He builds this idol and declares this festival the next day. And we don't know exactly who or what they're worshiping, whether it's other gods or, or an image of God. We're not sure. But you, you know what? Regardless, they break the first two commandments. Whatever those details are, regardless of that, they break those commandments. Here, here's a thought. Here's a thought. Here's a, here's, a, here's a bonus question. Bonus question here for a minute. The gold jewelry that they melt down, where'd it come from? I mean, <laughs> these people were slaves for 400 years. And, and, and how now is there all this how is there all this bling in the desert that they're on the route to the promised land? But where'd this jewelry come from? The answer, back to Egypt, back, back to the Passover. And, and, and where the Egyptians are urging the people to leave, get out of here. And, and in fact, if we were to jump back to chapter 12, uh, you see here in a couple of verses, should be on your screen, that, that at Passover here now, when they leave, now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, and they had asked from the Egyptians articles of silver, articles of gold and clothing, and the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they granted them what they requested. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. So then they leave Egypt, when they leave through those parted waters, they're leaving with a bunch of stuff. They're, they're leaving with a, with, with a boatload of stuff. And, and so now stay with me here. Stay with me. Back to chapter 32. With all this stuff that God had gifted them. All, all this stuff that, 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 they, that they take as a gift. Leaving Egypt. They take that and melt it down. And begin worshiping it. The gift had become an idol. The gift became an idol. The gift they had been given, been given became an idol that they worshiped. This blessing, this, this, this ability 
this, this possession, this, this relationship, whatever at times God can, can, can give to us, that God can, can bring into our lives these gifts that God gives us. And, and we, can, we can so easily take that and put it in the place of God. We can take that and make it an idol. We've taken something that's been given to us by our Heavenly Father and we put it in a, a place that's God's and we give it God's place. It, I hope you can see the parallel. That, that, that's what I'm trying to draw here. And just, and just to ask, is that happening with you right now? And I'm not trying to be, you know, I'm not trying to bring you down. I'm not trying to do anything like that. But if, if your faith walk, if, you're, if, if you could say your spiritual life has, has stalled out, uh, could it be that something or, or someone is competing and, and, and winning for the place that God needs to have in your life? Has something that's not bad, something that's good, crept into that place that is rightfully God's. That's something to, that, that's a checkpoint. That's something to, to think about. As one commentator said that, that, that when we grow impatient because God is taking too long, we often take what is good, those gifts that God has given, and we place our trust in them instead. That's, that's something to think about. Man, this I hope you're seeing that uh, this story is loaded. Uh, it, it's, it's loaded. There's so much here for us in this story. I want to make one more point. One more point. We've looked at impatience. We've looked at idol. And then part three, uh, intercession. Uh, intercession. Hey, three words that all start with the letter I. Uh, if, if you like that kind of thing, um, hey, that, that's for you. All the words start with the same letter. And... And I'm kind of proud of that. So, part three, intercession. Let's go back to verse nine and, and read a few verses here. God says, I've seen these people. The Lord said to Moses, they are a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them, that I may destroy them. Then it will make you into a great nation. This is the, this is the hardest part of the story. God is... God is tipped. He is angry. He, he, he has a red hot anger. And how do we make sense of this? Does God have a right to be angry? Yeah, he does. He does have that right. They have, they have disobeyed only, only days, weeks after saying that they would keep this covenant. All that God's done in freeing them and, and, and bringing them, taking them out of Egypt, and they turn just like that. Uh, plus, how can God be passive on, on, on this, on what's happened? His, his holiness, his, his righteousness demands that he do something. So what happened? What happened with his anger? Well, we know, we know that he relents. That God appears to change his mind. Why? Because an intercessor steps in. Because Moses stepped in. Look at verse 10 again. Uh, look at verse 10. Uh, God says, now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. Now think about this for a minute. You're Moses. Okay, you're Moses, then that sounds good. That, that, sounds, that sounds tempting. I mean, hey, Moses knows what these people are like. When God says they're stiff-necked, that does not come as a surprise to Moses. He knows that. 
He knows how difficult they can be. He knows how, they can, how, how, he, can, how he can just lose his patience with them. Uh, so he gets that. But Moses is being tested here. He's being tested as a, as a leader right here in chapter 32. Because for Moses, after God says this, what was Moses, what was his heart? Was it to, to be that great nation, to be the, the father of that great nation? No. What was most important for Moses was God's honor and glory, most of all. Moses didn't want to be the, 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 the Abraham, the father of a great nation. He wanted God's name to be hallowed on earth as it is in heaven. To start of the Lord's Prayer, which we covered back in week one. Exalting God's name. Wanting God's name to be great. That was his desire, his foremost desire. That was his heart. And so what does he do? He mediates between God and the people. How does he do that? How does Moses mediate here? Well, he reminds God of his promises. Not that God forgot, but he reminds him. He says, look, remember. Remember what you promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. R remember that the line of Messiah would come from the line of Judah. Moses is a Levite. He's not from the line of Judah. But, but he says, remember, you, you promised that. Just a, a, a sidebar here for a minute. Just a sidebar. Think about this. That, that if God wanted, in, in, if, if God intended to wipe Israel out here, then why tell Moses about it? Just do it. If, if God tells Moses to give him an opportunity for them to repent. He, he, he brings this, he says this to Moses, and Moses responds, rightly responds to it. Moses doesn't leave God alone. He intercedes. Someone said, this is the best of Moses. We, we see right here what he's doing right here. He's reminding God of his promises. Which is, we can't miss this, because we're, as we're doing this series on prayer, that, that, that to note this, that God loves it when we pray his promises back to him. God loves it when we pray his promises back to him. It honors him. It focuses on his love, his mercy, and his grace. And as we do that, we're reminded of his faithfulness and, 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 that, and things that we have a tendency to forget. Moses intercedes, and God relents. Uh, interceding, coming to God on behalf of another. Uh, remember last week, if you were with us last week, remember we, we looked at the story where Peter was in jail. And, and we, we saw the, the early church, they were gathered, gathered at Mary's house, gathered at the house, and what they were doing, they were praying. They were interceding on behalf of Peter. The church was praying for him. Interceding is not something that, that a person would go, well, uh, that's something you have to have a special gift for. You have to have a special ability for, God-given ability. No. Interceding for others is an all-play. It's something that everyone does. To pray for one another. To intercede for one another. We don't just pray for ourselves. We pray for others. We intercede for others. Some of you, uh, and, and it's an awesome idea, you make a list. You, you make a weekly list of, of, of people, situations, um, things to pray for. So you're praying on a regular basis. You're interceding on a regular basis. Fantastic. Uh, that works for you. You should do it. If you've never tried that, 
maybe that would work for you too. But interceding is an all play. You know, I think there's, there's a point in this passage. Um, you know, God's merciful, he's gracious, he's slow to anger. But in the Old Testament, we see passages where we, we see God's anger, his, his judgment, his wrath. And those are to serve as an example for us too. But how do we make sense of those passages the perceived harshness of the Old Testament at times? It's a big question. But, but I think this helps. I, I think there's one way to think about it, and it's this. It's to look to another intercessor. To look to another intercessor who climbed a different mountain but had a similar plea, the plea of, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. The best way of, of dealing with the Old Testament is, is not by ignoring it, but by reading it in light of a mountain called Calvary, where, where the justice and the mercy of God come together, where His glory and His promises and His love for us is fulfilled in Jesus the story in Exodus 32 leads us to Jesus who was the new Moses or the, or the better Moses who climbed a greater mountain and serves as a mediator for us. 1 Timothy 2, 5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. That's Jesus and so often, like, like Israel, we can, turn, we can turn to other things. We can make idols. But Jesus, he satisfied God's wrath for our disobedience on the cross. That through Jesus and, 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 and Jesus being our intercessor, that, that we receive his righteousness for our sin. We give him our sin. He gives us his righteousness, and we are made whole. That, that, that is what God offers you today. And that's something that's not automatic. You need to receive that. And, and, and perhaps today, I, I trust many of you have, but, but if you haven't, you need to receive that. His gift, placing your faith in what Jesus has done and then following him with your life. That's what he offers. That, that's, his, that's his work on our behalf that he satisfies the wrath for our sin. We've covered a lot. We've covered a lot. I don't want this, I, I don't want this teaching just to be a blur because we've said so much. So just, just recap here for a minute. What have we talked about? We've talked about, we've talked about impatience, about falling back on old habits, about going back to, to Egypt when, when we can't wait for change. We've talked about be patient. Don't lose patience. Maybe that's, maybe that's for you today. We also talked about idols. That, that, a, that a gift, a, a, a blessing, a person, a thing uh, can so easily in our lives take the place of God. And just, we need to stop and be brutally honest on that and to look inward and say, has that happened in my life? We've talked about that. And then thirdly, we've talked about intercession. And here in our, in our series, I Pray, the importance of interceding for others, not just ourselves, but interceding for others. And as we learn to pray, exalting God, Exalting God first, loving to honor his name, and praying back his promises. Knowing his promises and praying them back. When he says, he promises, come and I'll give you rest. When he says that, he says that I will supply your needs. 
that nothing is able to separate us from the love of God. To ask for wisdom, it'll be done. It, it, you'll receive it. The, these promises, when we pray them back to God as we intercede. We're going we're gonna to respond to this in, in, in two ways. We're going to respond to this one. Uh, shortly, we're going to move into a time of communion. And so uh, you can hit pause or you can, you can make those preparations now. In a few minutes, we're going we're gonna to move into a time of communion. But before that, uh, we'll just move into a song. And I hope that's, that's time for you to, 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 to think about, to meditate on what we've uncovered here in this passage. We're going to listen to a song now, and then we'll come back. We'll close with a time of communion. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your head. Till I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God In all my life you have been faithful In all my life you have been so
pray. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for your word for us today. We thank you uh, giving it to us for our instruction. And we pray that it would land on, on good soil, uh, that it would bear fruit. Lord, we, we confess to you at times our impatience. Uh, we confess to you our times of falling back on old ways, old habits, old patterns of thinking, God. We confess that to you and pray that, uh, pray for your forgiveness and pray for your cleansing. God, that, that we, would, we would not fall back, that we would, we would not be impatient. May the fruit, may the fruit of patience uh, well up in our lives. Uh, Lord, as, as you bring that to us, uh, God, we just open ourselves up. Help us to be patient, Lord. Help us to, to turn from the temptation of idols. Lord, the, the blessings that you give us, God, that we can, we can morph those into other things that become idols, just like the people did thousands of years ago. God, would you help us to see if that's, if that's so in our lives? God, give us the courage to be honest, to, to be brutally honest. Uh, Lord, reveal to us, uh, God, how, how easily we can, we can make idols that take your place in our lives. Oh, God, may our trust be in you and in you alone. And Father, we, we continue to ask that you would help us to learn to pray, that, that you would help us to, to learn to, to, to praise you more, to give you your rightful place. Uh, to desire your name to be, to, be, um, to be made known, to be great. Help us to intercede for others. Uh, God, knowing that, that, that just as, as Moses um, interceded, Lord, just as others we see in Scripture, uh, the importance of interceding. God, may that be so in our lives as you grow us in this area of prayer. And now, most of all, we thank you for Jesus, uh, the author and finisher of our faith, God, who, who, is, who is the greatest intercessor, coming and, and taking our sin and giving us his righteousness. And we thank you, Lord, for his great sacrifice, his broken body, his shed blood. Uh, Father, we just say thank you for your, for your grace and your mercy, your love, it's nothing we deserve. It's something that, that's freely given. And we just thank you. We receive it here now. Uh, God, in this time of communion, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul says, For I received from the Lord that which I passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you to do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the bread and eat together. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's take the cup, drink it together, and be thankful. Amen. Amen. That's such a powerful thing to be doing this, uh, to be doing this, and I, I trust we're doing it together, uh, even though we're not physically present. Awesome. Awesome. Just going to touch on a couple, a couple housekeeping things before we, uh, before we break off here. Uh, before we break off, hopefully it is not much longer before we can be doing this in person. That, that, is, that is my hope, and I'm not letting go of that. So I uh, just want to mention a couple things. One is, is prayer time tonight. Great to see folks that are coming out in person here uh, at 6 o'clock. And, uh, and for prayer time on Sunday nights at the church, I really encourage you to come to that. 
uh, 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, here tonight. Also want to mention that uh, you should have received a notice uh, about a work day, a special project coming up on uh, this coming Saturday, February the 12th, uh, that, that we've been, we've been um, uh, putting a number of emails out for, uh, for, for the Boschhoff family and, uh, and their, their recent changes in, in spending the next year with, with Operation Mobilization down in South Africa. Uh, their house, uh, new renters are coming into their house. And so this coming weekend, uh, we need to transform their house. We need, to, we need to clear their main level and bring everything downstairs uh, into their lower level. And so that would include their stuff, their furniture. And, and then we need to clean that main level. We're doing it in three... Uh, three shifts, if you will, because we're only allowed, at this point, we're only allowed 10 people per shift. And so you could be shift one, you could sign up to be a packer. And we're packing things up in, in boxes, getting things ready. Uh, shift number two are the movers, uh, taking those, uh, taking all that stuff, bringing it downstairs uh, into their lower level. And then the third shift, uh, once that's done, the third shift are the cleaners that are, are cleaning, uh, cleaning that main level uh, for the renters who are coming in shortly. This would be a huge blessing uh, for, this, for this family, for this New Life family. And so to sign up, uh, you can simply go on to uh, hit that sign up link that uh, you would see in the email. Uh, we can take up to 10 people per shift. Really, really encourage you to to help. You can sign up for more than one shift if there's room, but, uh, but it, it would be, tr it'd be tremendous. Even, even getting together huh, to do something like this is, uh, is a good thing. And so uh, just, just would encourage you. It's, 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 it's a wonderful job to do, wonderful blessing for this family. And so I'll leave that with you for this coming Saturday. And so now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great week.